feel like I'm covered in white bits all the time. That's because you roll around on the floor all the time. Don't. I haven't rolled around the floor in a long time. Because oh, I'm stupid, old shit. Oh. Me. Why is your mic too high? So I. Have you, have you shrunk? I don't know. You what sitting back? Fuck? Are you social distancing? The dimensions are all wrong. <laughs> now you're fucking with the TV. No, no, that's not me, bro. I don't know why that's happening. It was going. No, it was all right no. for a while. Fucking hell! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Outlaw Picks podcast. Oh shit, I'm not really ready. Well, under teed. Under teed. <laughs> I interviewed a physio for a role. For a role, yeah, for a what, role. What, like a... Not like for a, a role. Like a five-minute round. <laughs> like, are you shit at jiu-jitsu? Would you like to roll with me? <laughs> uh, You'd be too good, you can't have a job. And the other, everyone else on the call was American, and I was like, oh, I can't do this without a T. And they all just went, Ugh. Ugh. I don't know what's going on. I apologise for the flickering screen. Again, I'll have to yeah, contact the, the graphics ghost. department. The fucking thing. Anyway, it's not on. an amazing start. I've done, the, I've done my bit. Right, listen. <laughs> if you are down with the OPP... Yeah, you know me. Yeah, nice. Uh, You would have heard us talk about Unbound Merino a lot at regular intervals. It's incredibly high quality. We are wearing it right now. Ethically sourced, always in style. And they are going in for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Going in. So as of right now, right now, there is 40% off uh, on the website. And 40% 40% off. off on the web, up to 40% off on the website. Not everything is 40%, up to 40% off on the website. And there will be even bigger deals on Cyber Monday. But if you wait till then, I can't guarantee that they will have stock. Um, they won't have stock. But I don't think so. I think they're going to sell out real fast. So it's up to you. You can take the gamble and you can wait to see what the discounts are like for Cyber Monday. Or you can exploit the up to 40% off now and get on board with Unbound Merino. Also, because we're such good friends of them, they've given us a Outlaw Extra code that will give you another 5% off whatever they've already got off on the website. Outlaw Extra nice. will give you an extra 5% off. So go to unboundmerino.com, jump on board. They have everything from crewnecks, to jumpers, to hoods, to track pants, to socks, to beanies, everything. It's very cool. We need to get a little one for Darth Vader. Man, that would be like a like a little cool. merino sweatshirt. Yeah, a black one, a black hood. Have you seen the guy that always says "Don't Google Mule Sing"? On yeah, the, <laughs> on the comments. I haven't. I won't. <laughs> Because I have a feeling that it's going to be terrible. Do not, do not Google. It. So this is why Darth needs one of these because yeah. they've got dark side, dark side hoods. Oh, like nice. they're big enough to be a Sith Lord. Yeah, to yeah, see. Yeah. TV's agreeing with me. As soon as you Sith Lord. Sith Lord. Sith Lord. <laughs> Sorry, I On Bamarino.com. Go get it. It's wicked. You'll love it. And use the discount codes because you'll get it cheaper, basically. Nice. So the, uh, that's the read. All good. So <coughs> we're reviewing because... Because there's nothing happening There's nothing week. happening. Well, there's lots happening. There's nothing happening for the UFC, is there? No. Um, which is quite rare. Oh, yeah. But, there is a one championship this Friday, isn't there? Right. Hang on. I'll pull that up as well. You continue. You've got notes. I have got notes. You're of organized. Of course, I like to be prepared. Of course you do. Um, I quite enjoyed this card. People were sort of getting at it a bit before it happened, as they do, and I quite enjoyed it. What was with all the hip throws? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Judo's back. Um, we're seeing a lot in the gym as well, though, aren't we? Yeah. It's a good Off, way of, of, the, of getting positions moving. Yeah. Even From if you don't wizard. get it. Yeah. Even What's if you the, don't get it. the leg movement? It's the gaki, right? I is don't that, know. Is the hack. I think it's the gaki. Jimmy's the one to it's ask like for that. It's gaki. Yeah. yeah. It's like a wizard. I hope that's wizard right. Throw. Otherwise, I'm going to get trip. all kinds of abuse. Wizard throw. <laughs> all kinds of abuse. Pinheiro is all right, isn't she? Yeah, we she is it. good. She is good. I did feel like there were moments, though, where Sam Hughes could have just kind of gone after her a little bit because, like, she wasn't comfortable a lot of the time. I've... Like as, as we said, like, as soon as you get her past the first round, she's going to start to look uncomfortable yeah. because she's only done it once before yeah. and she lost a split decision. And there were times when she was like, Ugh. and Sam Hughes is tough and she'll scrap, but she just didn't put herself in positions where she could. She just didn't recognize, she didn't, exactly what you're saying, she didn't recognize when she 
like Pierre just was taking a little breath. He was like, yeah. "Oh fuck!" Yeah, and she and she could, if she pushed and pressured, then it could have it could have changed the, the path of the fight. Yeah, um, I mean the thing is, Pierre is good, man. She is good. She's she good. is good, and she was very effective at fighting in like a burst. Like she yeah. would. She would wait and she'd move bah, 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 and bah, bah, she'd kind of gather herself yeah. and then she was very quick off the mark. Yeah. And she had nice, like everything was stitched together nicely, striking a little bit chaotic. And if it got stalled, then she looked uncomfortable. Yeah. But if she got it all the way through to the final expression, you know, down to the she's floor, gone. she's... It's just the ebbs and flows of the fight. I don't feel like Sam Hughes was in tune, as uh-uh. in tune as she could have been with what was like the... What how do you call it? Like the, the tempo of the fight. She wasn't she able wasn't to quite, shift yeah. it in her favour at yeah. all. Like really, I mean, Sam Hughes might be a, like a like a Brian Barberena kind of fighter, like back you up and maul you and yeah. just just beat you to the punch because they're doing more. She just and, she's tough, isn't she? But yeah. she just yeah, she just missed a couple of couple of chances. I thought lovely, yeah. like you say, lovely hip toss from the wizard, and also um, Pinheiro like fake to a single. <clears throat> Pop back up and and threw a left hook on the end of it and caught some. I think yeah. it was not. Nice. It was really nice. It was wicked. I saw one with the Aoki doing that a little while ago. I was, yeah, I think we've discussed it. Where he he threw a head kick. He's from a southpaw stance. Throws a head kick. Bounces off the guard. Yeah. A little bit later, throws another head kick. A bit lazier. A bit slower. And then the third time, he faints high and then drops low and wraps that lead leg Beautiful. and takes him down. Beautiful. He's against uh, Edward Falaya. Nice. Um. So yeah, it was not a bad, not a bad start. I think I don't know whether Hughes would be like devastated by that loss. I reckon she'll come out of that feeling like it was not too. It what the 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 level wasn't too different. She just didn't quite do what she needed to do. Yeah, she's just not in a good spot though, is she? Because she's, no. I mean, she she what well, she lost three in a row in the UFC. She hasn't got enough X factor to and buy, been buy herself fighters. another fight, really. Either, not really. She? It's not like oh, oh, she's lost three, but look, she's got this thing. Yeah, I mean, maybe yeah. she'll go back to LFA and and, and pick up a couple of wins yeah. and then be fight there ready. Yeah, yeah. It's not like she's not tough enough. She just needs to, she, she needs to know when to apply her skills, and where, and read her opponent a bit better. Mm. Like like you said, like I mean, maybe I'd I'd say that she was the one recovering as well when Pinero yeah, was maybe. taking a break, but it didn't look like she was. It just looked like she works at that steady pace and mm. she just kind of couldn't get herself quite into range. Yeah. yeah. I don't anyway. know I don't know how far Pinheiro goes. She she looks like she's sort of working away to find a real solid game to sort of challenge the, the top ladies in that division. Yeah. I don't think she's there yet, right? No, I don't know. I, I feel like if she comes up against someone that like, like digs their heels in and, and he's willing to really scrap yeah. with her. Pressure game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, Tisha Torres has got a win over Sam Hughes. That might be, a, that might make sense. Mm-hmm. That might be a good step. Yeah. Let me get the rankings pulled up. Yeah, I had them up earlier. Um, New Dembeki, I was like, as I was watching it, are we, are we still talking about Pinier? Yeah, yeah, Do you want to have a look at the, no, we can look yeah. at the rankings first? Yeah. Where are they? Where are they? They're coming. They're coming. Oh, okay. Way too many uh, tabs open. <laughs> Straw weight right down the bottom. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the... I mean, is Jessica Penne coming off a win? I think she picked up mm. a win in the last one. Anyway, like there's a couple of good options down at the bottom of the top 15. Like someone like an Angela Hill might be a good test. Mm-hmm. Like Angela's consi- like a consistent kind of benchmark to test fighters against. Like someone like Amanda Lemos might be a real problem because she's got that that grit to like stand her ground and fight. She's physically very strong, very imposing, and she's got good hands as well. Like he- like heavy boxing. Like yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. If, she, if she she gets through the first round, she doesn't get and just keeps coming at her. and then keeps pressuring her. Someone like that. Would be a, yeah. a, a tough one. I mean, Verna's just come off a win, hasn't she? She might be a good option as well. Verna Janderoba. Yeah, she'll she'll bring it to her, won't she? Always. She's not gonna she's not gonna back. Good down. grappling game as well. So if it does end up on the ground, it, you know, it's it, it might be competitive there as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's see. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But it, it, you know, it was a decent win. I don't think she does a. I don't think she like puts a marker down. It's like, look, I'm here. Look what I just nah. did. It's just a solid sort of mid. Mid tier win, isn't it? Good for her to pick up a win over three rounds. Good yeah, for her yeah, to true. Get, Good get experience. A decision win. Yeah, probably a confidence booster for her. Also, it. sometimes I think, like, a, like, how to recognize that pacing strategy. If you just 
consistently aren't going to the third round. You you don't subconsciously work out what a three round uh, pacing yeah, strategy like feels like, it. you know. And like now she's got that. In the, she's it. got that in the bank. Yeah, she's uh, yeah for sure. I definitely think that first time you go three rounds and you and you like you assure yourself you can work hard over three rounds. Yeah, it's a it's a big <laughs> step forward. Um, okay, you and Becky and uh, Soriano. Soriano, yeah. It's funny. Uh, like you you've definitely touched on it before, but like this game is. It's like um, decision tree after decision tree after decision tree in it. And depending on which fork you're sort of taking, the decision takes you down a certain road. And like in that first round, um, New and Becky just made one or maybe two like poor decisions. And then that was it. The round was, he basically lost the round and then came back, came back with a, a, with a bit of a vengeance and, you know, pulled it back in round two and dominated round three, didn't he? Mm. And, and he came, came away with a, with a good win. Um, but yeah, it's just the smallest, it's like a cascade effect in it. Like you make one mistake and then it's just like, oh, I'm rolling down yeah. this river of shit now and I have to try and paddle my way back out of it. I think but, that's when, you know, when people say it's it's like, it's 90% mental. I yeah. think that's the part that they're talking about just primarily. Just see the decision making mm-hmm. slowly. You know, like the guys that are the best in anything they do, it seems like they see everything in slow motion, doesn't it? It's yeah. like they're playing at a different tempo. And like everything is rushed to a beginner and then everything is like slow to a to a to uh, someone who's elite. Mm. And that's what it is, is you should make that decision under calm decision-making. But that, that requires a level of confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. It, even when things start to go bad, it requires a level of confidence to go, all right, so right, I'm going to pull this back. Yeah. You know? And you know, it's something that, that I often think about, especially in fights like that, where it starts bad and then start then, you know, mm. is is recovered in the second and third. What would the fight look like if you took out the the breaks in the rounds? Like Oof. that point to regroup. Yeah, yeah right. Like like yeah. do, like does There's that, no chance to regroup now. Like how much of a mental break is that from the fight to be able to yeah. sit down and go, Okay, I need to I need to fix this. This is not going well. Plenty of people just get to the second round or just get to the third round and then turn it around, don't they? Yeah. Plenty of times. Yeah. Yeah, Australia never really thought about it like Like Pride, they used to do the 10-minute round, didn't they, to start with? Yeah. And sometimes people would have a rough 10-minute round. I'm going to start you on the 10-minute round. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Wicked. Yeah. Seems like a long time, doesn't it? 10 minutes. I had the guys this morning on that 15-minute cycle against the wall. (sighs) And uh, it'll be in the new new Rough House episode going up soon. It was a a brutal session this morning. When you go from... Three, well, both ways. When you go from three minute rounds to five minute rounds, it's like an eternity. It is. And then when you go, when Backwards. like you've sort of the camps are finished and then you start the new camp at three minute rounds, you're like, oh, yeah, this is all right. Right. This is Drop easy. into a boxing class. Yeah. And what? The bell starts. Three minutes. Oh, oh. All right. Oh, that's, oh, that's just right. warming up. Nice. Yeah. It's, um, it's weird how quickly it changes things though, isn't it? Yeah. T- that extra, extra two minutes. Yeah. So then what it's happens just... if you take that one minute rest out? 15 minutes back 15 to back minutes to back. just straight but, through. Well, you'd, you'd probably, the quality of the sport would probably get less. You'd need more stand-ups, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd have to like instantly <laughs> stand people up, yeah. Yeah, the because you, cause you want, it's that fine balance, isn't it? People are always fucking with rules in all kinds of sports, but you want, it, you still want it to be appealing to watch. Yeah. And if it was a 15-minute round and like everyone's screwed by seven minutes in, it's just going to be a miserable last seven yeah. minutes predominantly. I'd be interested to see some like high level pro MMA uh, five three minute rounds. Yeah, because you're coming out hard, ain't you? Yeah, you're coming out pace hard. changes. Yeah, you get a minute to reset, so you you know every About fifteen every... one minute rounds <laughs> with a minute's rest in between. In a phone box <laughs> yeah. with knives. Yeah. Oh, we've got getting out of hand. You're yeah. getting way out we've got of hand. Sidetracked. Now. No, I, I mean I, I like the three because obviously the guys at the gym have been sparring threes because they're fighting on golden tickets soon, yeah. and a lot of them are amateurs. So they're like like three minute rounds. It's like it's, it's so out. easy to lose the round. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so easy to all of a sudden you've been taken down, you're scrambling, you can't quite get back to your feet. You take a few shots and the bell goes and you're like, oh, yeah. shit. Now now you're into the next round and now you've really got to do something. Yeah. And you absolutely don't want the same thing to happen again. And it could quite easily happen in a three-minute round. It's it's weird. That's it's true. Like, that I mean, is very true. You just don't have time to win that round back, do you? No. By the time you sort of circled, felt each other out a little bit, exchanged a little bit, oh, now you got put on your back on suddenly the... Oh, you know, I've tried to get up twice yeah. and he, he stuffed my get up and now it's, the round's over. Yeah. Shit, I'm one down. But then, I, I do wonder how, like, <clears throat> obviously we're still learning because it's still a new sport, but I wonder how, like, 
the amateurs coming through right now that are getting good experience over three minute rounds, mm. then when they turn pro and they still set the three minute round pace, pace. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, they do fight at a hell of a pace, don't they? Yeah. Like you watch Especially the, boys the smaller in the gym, guys. It's like, like, yeah. like, you watch Jack and, uh, and that lot. The Henschel, output, Tom Owen, and Tom, the Riley. They're putting, yeah. It's like double or, Kieran, double or treble what the bigger sure. guys are putting out. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, it's bro, common, isn't it? again. The the leg drag to half guard to get up, it's just not being done, is it? I mean, obviously it's been it is being done, but it's not like a like encoded on the mainframe no. of everyone that bang half guard, leg drag half guard on the hook get up. It's, he, not, I'm not saying he could have easily got up, but people should be doing it unconsciously, though, yeah. shouldn't they? They should literally be doing it unconsciously just in case they're taking yeah. big shots. Yeah, it should be that ingrained. You just know it. You yeah. just know it. Yeah. Like a couple of boys, again, going back to the gym, a couple of boys at the gym are like so comfortable there now. Yeah. Like, yeah, whatever, fine. It's whatever. Actually, surprisingly, <coughs> surprisingly, it can be learned really quickly. Mm. Like a few of the guys, like if you if you think some of the guys that were really struggling in the, in mount and, and yeah. side control positions, and now they're starting to escape with good basics. Yeah. Like it can be learned really quickly, especially when you start to actually get the reward of actually escaping a bad position. Yeah. You go, oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh. But as we, were, as we were talking about earlier, like an escape on the ground is like landing a good combination on the yeah. feet. Like you need to do each step, each, each step correctly with the right timing in order to achieve your outcome absolutely absolutely i like henry hoofman he's he's very uh calm in the corner yeah and, and i know i know it, it didn't go his way in the end but he's very calm nice tone you know he's not a fan he's not fanning people up or you know mm. what i mean he's just like tells him what he needs to know yeah and gets it done <coughs> very he, should have, he should have his own sleep app yeah i know yeah, okay yeah, yeah. just now calm down <laughs> take a breath I think Soriano looked like he took that loss really hard, like he looked quite emotional about it. But, you know, he's not that far off. It's just the control game is the control game. That's why yeah. it's, the pillar, it's the pillar of the sport, isn't it? Yeah. Is if you, if you can exert control, you're stacking, the, you're stacking the deck. Yeah. I mean, he landed more significant strikes. Yeah. Like 35 significant strikes out of 56. This, all, this leads on something else. Another fight later on. So... By your honesty, what is a significant strike? Like something that upsets the balance of the yeah. opponent. So if if you if well, I mean we'll talk about it later. But if you land a strike, but they're rolling that they're rolling that quite significantly, it looks like it's hitting you, but you're actually rolling it. Like what is it? This because, is the issue with these stats. Is is how yeah, it, man, it's, it's all like, based on the on a on a read of a human. And how well they understand the 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 impact of the shots. Davy Grant looked like he landed a lot, but when you watch it real close, he is not landing very much at no, all. Yanez is rolling or absorbing like yeah ninety percent of it. Yeah, he's got like we, we talked about on the on the the podcast last week about how he's very kind of Masvidal style. Yeah, but he's got adaptability to his style. Like he can change it. Like a lot of that stuff that he was doing, like rolling stuff off the lead shoulder and kind of shrinking away mm. out of range is very Robbie Lawler, <laughs> you know? Like yeah, he's, he's right. got that kind of merge. He's a very, very slick striker. Really good. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I just, <clears throat> like if, if, if significant strikes is, sorry, the judges have access to the, the stats for significant strikes, right? No. No, they don't? No. Okay, well that changed it a little bit. No, they, they don't have access thinking, to anything. They don't even have a screen. They literally watch, just watch, the, the watch it through and, the fence. Judge it. But yeah. again, like it, you know, it goes back to. Oh no, sorry, they do have a screen. They have a screen in front of them, a small one. But they don't have stats. No, they don't. They have no stats. That's good. At least it's, that's it's not, a blank feed. Could there's, be quite there's not even any pop ups or anything yeah. on it. It's, yeah. 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 No, I mean it's <clears throat> it's up for debate, isn't it? Like, what's mm. a significant strike, and how valuable is a strike like a like one of the like a tap from side control, a hammer fist from yeah, side control, a, or a half guard compared straight to straight right down the pipe standing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't even know as there should be a, a, a division between significant and total strikes. Mm. But you like opening it up to subjectivity. It's like, oh, what you think significant is not significant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like strike or not strike. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's I mean, what, it like I'm not saying it's not. Well, how tough, do you weigh up? Do you weigh up like what's 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 highly prioritized? Is it immediate damage or gradual damage? Yeah, like you want immediate damage. They're the Diaz accumulation blows of damage. That, yeah. yeah, but that doesn't score as highly. Yeah, toughen it. Yeah, it's weird. we're all figuring it it's, out. Yeah. We're all figuring this game out. I think there's a certain level of just kind of 
like there's a certain level of instinct to it. Like yeah. you've got to kind of feel who, who won the fight without a bias. Yeah. And that's the difficult part. That's why you've got to put it in some kind of rigid scoring structure. Yeah. To but set you, the bias yeah. out of it. But you saw it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know who's winning the fight. Yeah. Like, you just watch yeah. it. You know if it's a score, you're like, oh, he won that round. Some of them are really close, though. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are incredibly close. That's the, the level of the people in the sport at the minute, isn't it? It is. Okay, um, next up. Richie Leng. Yeah, and or Richie Leng. Richie Leng and Durden. I thought this was closer than the result. Well, there you go. I thought this was close. I, you know, Arie yeah. Leng was not very far away from that, from winning that. But Durden's tough, though. He is incredibly tough. Yeah. He got he got tired very quickly, though, didn't yeah. he? He worked really hard and got really tired quickly and then started to look incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah. But, and this <coughs> this was a this was something I noticed in this fight as well as the, the Loma fight. And obviously, we do a lot of stuff at, at our gym with footwork and, like, cage control and understanding the space that you're in and how to, like, take it off your opponent and manipulate their movement. A lot of these fighters um, that I'm watching at the moment are, they, they've got good foot, foot, sorry, they've got good footwork reactive to their opponent, but not to the space that they're in. Mm. Does that make sense? And so not like, proactive footwork. Like, I'm, no. not, I'm not putting my footwork on you and steering you into where I want you. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's react, it's, it's like they can, they know how to like step to the outside of the foot to like expose that angle and make their opponent uncomfortable or, you know what I mean? Like square them up for particular techniques or whatever. But it's, I don't in know. In relation to their environment, yeah. it's not great. Yeah. Like, 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 like Peter Yan, for example. Yeah. Is a good it, Peter Yan is a good example of someone that uses the fence very well to kind of shepherd them into a corner where he can then start working them in a pressured situation. But then if you watch um, Loma, Loma's got really good footwork, but only in relation to her opponent. Yeah. Like if her opponent moves forward, she can quite happily circle herself onto the fence, completely ignoring the fact that the fence is there. Yeah. It's almost like like the space, the shape of the arena is irrelevant. Mm-hmm. It's like it's an open space, and she just kind of maneuvers around her opponent yeah. where she needs to. Maybe she's, maybe she's so comfortable in the clinch, but like, it, like I don't want to jump between fights. But um, Godinez, when she shot in on, this, on on her in the second round, and she got her backed up against the fence, like she'd stepped in, landed a couple of shots, and Loma committed to an up elbow, and she just level changed and shot yeah. her into the fence. Really clean takedowns. She would have been uh, far easier to defend those if she wasn't uh, trapped up against the fence. Hmm. But she often circled herself onto the fence because it was she's only reacted to her opponent. Yeah, it was almost irrelevant to her where where yeah. the fence was. But then, when used and conversely, when used right, it's like a weapon, right? Mm. You know, you're manipulating the environment by moving moving people into spaces that you want them moved into. Yeah, it's like it's like you're appealing to their subconscious yeah. to go the, in the direction that's safest. Yeah. Like, and and I was like I've been kind of reverse engineering this a little bit recently because like when I was doing the cage session on Thursday last week, Riley Riley said, uh, um, "Did you do this kind of stuff when you were when you were fighting, or mm. is this stuff that you've been like working on and understanding since?" And I understand it a lot better since, but I did also understand controlling somebody up against a fence yeah. or drawing them to me to counter because I like you know that they were two sides of my striking game that I was I was pretty familiar with, but. I think that's because when I started martial arts, it was because it was for, it was for reality situations. Mm. And in those circumstances, you've got to watch. There's a wall here. There's the phone box. I've got to watch that table behind me to my left. Mm. Like you've got to be aware of your surroundings and also aware of multiple um, yeah. opposite, you know, opponents. So it, it gives you this kind of spatial awareness that I think when you then go, oh, now we're in a ring, yeah. and now we're in a cage. And how much time are you training in the ring and in the cage? Really? Yeah, not a lot. Most people are training on mats, right? Padded walls and yeah. maybe a cage wall. Yeah. But they're not training with, you know, they're not training where they're going to compete. No. Well, I was thinking, thinking about what my head went off while you were saying that in that I find a lot, and I'm sure you'll find the same, sort of older generation coaches do stuff. And it's not until like now we reflect back on doing that. They're doing it and it's the right thing to do. They're not necessarily doing it for the right reason. But now we've come come to understand why that is a good thing to do, yeah. but they're not necessarily coaching it with that in mind, but they just they just know that it works for the sport. And now because we have more access to information or whatever, we're like, oh, you do that because of this. And they'll mm. be like, well, I don't, I don't give a fuck, whatever, yeah. we'll do this because it works. And then you work out why, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I'm sure there's some tie boxing stuff that you, you'd have talked about back in the day where you're like, 
oh, he never mentioned that's why we did it. But now I understand why we did it. Yeah. Because it's for whatever reason, you know. For sure. That's yeah. why I like looking through those old books. Yeah. Like even in, even if they're in a the language, I can't I can't understand. I like looking through and looking at the diagrams and, and trying to Figure you know, try and understand mm. what's going on. But like, especially with the, like a lot of the old styles of Kung Fu, there was stuff that they used to do with the footwork and with their lower, lower body mm. attacks that was really, really smart stuff. But hmm. then, like, they would have these, like, patterns that they would drill, like Singi or Bagua. They would move in he- uh, um, octagonal uh, footwork uh, patterns. And it was all about twisting and remaining balanced as you were doing stuff. Yeah. You were blocking and attacking. Just good drills. But, like, that then taken out and modernized and applied to MMA, f- for sure, is is valuable. Mm. Like, those patterns are, are good to be rehearsed. That's why I do a lot of footwork. Like a lot, you know. like, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the, the Kung Fu and a lot of the traditional martial arts was about postures right mm. and we know how important postures are like obviously the traditional martial arts got a little bit lost in terms of efficacy and how like yeah. actually usable it was but some of the principles were right yeah but they was they were also starting with nothing as well yeah, yeah. Like if, to, if you're yeah. a monk in a monastery on a on a hillside yeah. like what reference have you got for fighting it's not like you can jump yeah. on youtube and watch you know a million 50 fights. years worth <laughs> yeah. of, of you know high level professional um, martial arts or boxing like they were literally watching animals and trying to figure out. So yeah. they were they were like trying to understand how their body works in comparison to other animals that know how to how to fight with one another. Yeah, true. It's weird. It's mm. it's weird. It's like a technology. You see, Durden said something about sending it's him like back to China. Technology. Yeah, I yeah. But I was like, I was like, all right. Well, like if you fought someone from Wales and you said, "Oh, I'm going to send yeah. him back to Wales," like everyone's not going to cry about that. Yeah. Like you know what the problem is, bro? Is you've got half the world of dickheads. And half the world of wet wipes. And you've just got this like clash in the middle where what we need is dick wipes. Fucked. This is why I only speak to six people in the whole world. It's just like, fuck off. Like yeah. I don't like like everyone's like, oh my god, that's so racist. Yeah, I didn't I didn't understand how like, it was racist. Well, send you back to England, all right. Well, yeah. I'm going there anyway. Calm down. Yeah. Anyway. Like if if he was an, an American an Asian American yeah, right? that would have been. But he's actually from China, right? Yeah. I'm not getting that wrong. He's from China. He's Chinese, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I, I... All right. I'm going back anyway. I have my <laughs> flights booked. Sweet. <laughs> right. see, see, see you next Don't time. Stay at Vegas is gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, Luke Boomy and Loopy. I know we. This so, was a good so, fight. On it. I thought Loopy was really good. Yeah, really good yeah. man. Really good. Especially yeah. and and there's got there's something to be said for consistency of competition. I was going to say that right. She's just, just like, you, you know, you fall in and out of form, but you can't get form if you're not competing, right? So like now if, she's it, she's in form that's through it. competing. That's it. Like ima- imagine if there's if there was a situation where you could compete once every four weeks yeah. as long as you weren't injured. Yeah. Right. Like I mean, I mean, how much better would you get? Like football players play. You know, every once, weekend yeah. or something. Uh, yeah, sometimes twice a week. Yeah. There you go. Like rugby, what's the schedule for rugby? Yeah, once a week, pretty much, right. for eight, nine months of the year. That's pretty fucking physical. Yeah. That's a lot of work for, what, yeah. 90 minutes, is it? 80, 80 minutes. Yeah, what, uh, yeah, once a week. Fuck, working that Three that quarters of the year. 15, yeah. 25 at a push Yeah. for gold. But you know what I mean? It's like... yeah. Like, imagine if you, if there was a system where you could do that. Like, there was a league that you could get into where you could fight regularly, and you were like, as long as you were uninjured, put me back in. Coach. Like, what what is what is training? Training is preparing for competition, but nothing gets you better than than the actual nothing. competition. Yeah. But Having said so, that, Loma's had two hundred tie boxing fights, and yeah. although she probably beat, but it seemed Lupi like in uh, in, in well, she'd beat in yeah, right. <laughs> you would think, yeah, you would think so. Yeah. Um. Now, I like. Like, um, Luke Boomy is just like a bit set, isn't she? Like she, and when bit. she throws, it's like hard, like she yeah. fucking throws. But that setness and that feet planted a little bit. Luke, we weren't having a bar of it, where she, she was no. just, she was much more fluid in her movement, and she just mixed everything up, and like set up against the up against the uh, the fence. She just timed those takedowns and just blasted her a couple of times. Yeah. Like that that style of that style of striking works really well as long as the other person's only striking. Yeah, if they want to. As play. soon as you add a level change, yeah. and your feet are planted, yeah. you're not moving. Yeah, I remember. I distinctly looked at her feet a couple of times, and they were like 
they were pretty close. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, she does look like she's like she's gotten a lot heavier for this yeah. weight class. Slowed like she's an atom weight and she's moved up. Yeah. And, I mean, she looks fucking strong. Like she looks like she's been doing a lot of lifting. Like her legs are yeah. fucking heavy, massive, isn't they? Like she, she's probably she's probably in a in a much more mm. uh, a much thicker frame. You know, like I remember when I was fighting at walking around at one seventy and fighting at one seventy, and then when I'm walking around at two hundred plus and I'm like trying to move the same, and I'm like. Mm. Boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, it just feels different, you know. It feels heavier, feel more powerful. Uh, I know we're skipping between fights, but I, when I was watching the um, Kiesa and Brady fight, I was thinking, how ah, the fuck are they 170? Right. What the fuck? They're welterweight? How did Kiesa make 55, though? No, I know. Crazy. No, I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Flicking back to the Luke Boomy fight, the Jimmy Wall edge shin on throat made an appearance for a little bit there. Love it. Love it. There you go. Tried and tested. Some of that, yeah. Tried and tested. I like it. Yeah, it was it, it was a fun fight. I just I think we saw the limitations in Luke Bumby's mm-hmm. game, and I think I think her strength was being uh, like a high paced Muay Thai fighter that was lethal on the inside, and she just seemed to stand a bit at range. Yeah. She seems to have changed their angle of her kicks as well. They seem to be very straight, which squares the hips up, doesn't really mm-hmm. commit to the kick, which takes some of the power out of it, speeds it up a little bit, but mm-hmm. also leaves you susceptible to takedowns. I don't yeah. know. I think she'd have probably been Tough better one. trying to put it on Luke, on Godinez, like a high pace, high volume, chopping into her legs, yeah. like blocking her and blocking the takedowns and her, and, and uh, clinching elbows and knees. Yeah, Godinez was she's just a good advert for regular competition, mm. wasn't she? Yeah, I feel like she's got better in the last three fights for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. I don't. I don't know where. I, I, you know, I'm sure. I don't. Luke Bimby won't go back down, will she? There isn't a back down. This is the lowest weight class in the UFC. Oh, right, of course, yeah, atom weight. Yeah, right. All right. Yeah. She better speed up then. I know. She can't it. go back down. Yeah. She better speed up. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Nathan Levy and Garcia. Yeah. Is that next? Yeah. This was a this mm. was a, a a lot of fun to watch, but I was disappointed that Levy looked uncomfortable pretty early. Yeah. Like he started to look up at the clock. And I think even Fitzy referenced it once. He was like, oh, he's looking up at the clock to figure out his way out. And I'm like, he's not. He's trying to figure out how much time he's got left. <laughs> it's been a while since he's since he fought, isn't it? Yeah. He's got some potential though, right? Like <coughs> he has a couple of little bits about him where you're like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. You need, might you might need a little bit more time, but you got some you got some very aesthetic <laughs> techniques. Like mm-hmm. he looks great. I feel, I felt like Garcia was just a more Willing to like, just more comfortable, tough, yeah, more game, wasn't it? Out and just, like, he's a bit more of a brawler. But yeah. I don't mean that in a dis- mm. disrespectful way to his martial arts. He wasn't like brawling, Mm-mm. but he just had a bit more, a bit more dog in him, didn't he? Yeah. And he was, you know, Nathan looked pretty, and he did some like lovely stuff that you'd take photos of. And well, shit, look at that. And the guy was like, nah, yeah, double legs, single legs, fucking heavy hands. Right. On a different day, one of those body kicks could have stopped. Yeah. him, Could have won the fight. But he, yeah. he looks uncomfortable at certain times. He looks up at the clock a lot and I'm like, he just, he looks like he doesn't want to be here anymore. And again, the control game, like I see, he just controlled him, put him on his back. He's tough yeah. to get, get him off. But then that's, you know, going back to the fight that we've just been talking about, that's another argument for competing regularly. Like he's not been, he's not been competitive in a while. It's been, well, it's been a year. He's yeah. had two cancelled bouts and, <coughs> you know, he's still young in his career. He's got to be active. He's like, got to be active. Yeah, most other sports, when you think about it, taking a year and bo- <clears throat> box is different. Bo- boxing's similar enough that it that it translates, but imagine only playing one game of football a year. Fuck me, you'd have to have a good game, wouldn't you? Everything yeah. is built on that one game of football a year. Yeah. I mean the thing is, yeah, you do get bruised up and stuff in fights and, and sometimes you have a hard fight and you do need more than more than a couple of weeks off. But if you're fighting regularly, like I mean yeah. I think like Jimmy and I were probably fighting 14, 15 times a year, including yeah. kickboxing matches. Yeah, really? Excuse me. Yeah. I mean, we were... Oh, I got that like, really clear. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Like, oh, huh. I've got a real tickle in my throat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Are. I've been yelling all morning at the gym. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, right. Is that how, how much it was a yeah, year? Yeah. yeah. Like, we'd have a bunch of MMA. We'd, we'd probably fight MMA once a month, and then we'd have another kickboxing match. Like, I remember a few times, like, mm. I... And, and then the other thing as well is when I was, when I was first doing MMA professionally and... Um, um, a Muay Thai, like I would drop into a grappling competition on a weekend as well. So I was competing most weekends at something. Uh, UFC contracts um, locked in that you can't 
grapple without permission and stuff like that. Yeah, no, the, there are a few things that you can do. I, I see don't know people whether you dropping have in to, and out of stuff. Yeah. I don't know whether you have to get like. I don't know whether you have to get permission. pre-authorized. Or I something. think there would be a limitation if it was striking. Yeah, like you couldn't do yeah. anything. You couldn't do combat jujitsu. You could probably do yeah. grappling. But then, like the old contracts, the ones that we used to sign, it's, it used to say stuff like we couldn't go like skiing. Contract. And, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is sign this this piece of paperwork. And we own your soul. Yeah, everything yeah. forever. But it was like no horse riding. No, I don't know how yeah. cowboy got away with it because no. he must have been in breach contract. He just relied on daily anyway, basis. Do yeah. yeah, no cave diving. That was yeah. a fucking scary oh, story. That was Jesus. a horrendous story. Isn't it? Sounds like a nightmare. He's so close to not making it out of there. Yeah. There's probably Awful. been a few times that Cowboy's been yeah. so close to, uh, like the Grim Reaper's just been watching going, go on, motherfucker. Go on, one yeah. more step. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. No, Nate, I think Nathan will be back. I yeah, think, for sure. Uh, I think he's, soon. Got, he's got a future, soon. yeah. He's got a future. Yeah, I think yeah, it's a good point, you know, that that that's what these younger guys coming up should be doing, even if it's not striking as much as as you guys are doing, but they should be doing competition of some sort. Yeah. You just get used to competition. Yeah, these boys don't know it yet, but when you know when when Rough House yeah. gets moving in the new year, they're going to be competing a lot more. Yeah, we'll be rolling to tournaments together as well, and, and you know, grappling competitions and yeah. stuff. Take competition over. everywhere we can go, everywhere yeah. we can get it. There's no reason not to. Is no, there? especially before you turn pro, get as much experience as possible. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, funny, like because like, you just grab the pro setup and you apply it to amateurs and it's not necessarily the right thing to do. It's like, you don't train a kid like you train an adult while no. you train a pro. Like, you, you know, you bet you'd be better off competing more and training less as a, as a, um, amateur. For sure. And, and, used and to that yeah, exactly. And being sensible as well. Like if you are injured, if you are yeah. run down, then do stop. But yeah, if you can time. be competitive, like fuck it, if you're in shape, yeah, and you can get, it. and you can get three, four you know weeks what? It'll competition. Stop people getting in and out of shape all the time as well. If, sure, you're, yeah. if you're constantly, competing it's yeah. not like oh i get to camp oh great i can get out of shape all right I start camp having to get back in shape again yeah that stupid cycle that keep we them in season constantly uh, keep yeah keep ready yeah yeah uh pat sabatini was was pretty masterful wasn't he yeah like just frustrating just for control lots. yeah yeah I think he lots would have, he didn't really take much damage, did he? Lots, and I think no, he's that's I think why he's it was very good. And it was just like fucking like yeah, I'm back oh. again. But then it's you know it's on him to make make that stop. Yeah, you know Sabatini's I mean, closing doors left, right, and centre. He's can you know he's make direct route to to winning that fight, and he's he's tough, isn't he? He's tough to you know he's one of the evolutions of the sport. Is that how do you deal with someone at that level of control? Mm. Because it's not yeah. that great to watch. Nearly, a, but it, nearly eleven minutes of control. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. This is why yeah. I, th- I I think the focus and and this is reflected in the way that we train at the gym. Like the focus has got to be do damage, mm. do as much damage as possible. Mm. If you can take, if you're on someone's back and you can't get the choke, like immediately, then just abandon it and just beat the fuck yeah. out of them. Yeah, beat the hell out of them. Expose their neck. Make them want to be submitted. Mm. Like, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. Yeah, I like. I wonder how, like, what Pat Sabatini feels like the next day. He's like, "Fuck yeah, that was awesome." I don't or know. He's a bit like, well, you know, I just had to do what I had to do. Yeah, I got it. It's the main thing. I got the win. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it, but I got the win. I was never particularly satisfied with the decision. I always felt like it was a bit unresolved. Yeah. I had some tough fights though. I mean, twenty-five minutes against Matt Thorpe, and I, and I remember at the end of that feeling to myself like I deserved the win. But you know, I, yeah, but I also felt like you know, like it wasn't conclusive enough because I didn't yeah. stop him. If you fight with someone for twenty-five minutes, you know you've been in a fight for sure. Because that's a, that's yeah. a tough dude who's, who's hanging for twenty-five Definitely. minutes. Definitely, he nearly got me a couple of times yeah. with arm bars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you see Marcus Davis won his uh, first pro fight in nine years? No. Yeah. I didn't I even know that was a thing. I think he's 48 and he had a fight oh, the other day. No. Mate's fucking shredded. Is he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That one happens, by, happens one, around that age. One by two. <laughs> that does happen around that age. <laughs> 48, Can't yeah. wait. Yeah. yeah. Can't that, wait. It's that second... The uh, second pulse that of testosterone. That second puberty, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Good on Midlife him. puberty. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, uh, he won by triangle. Yeah, what was the yeah. promotion called? TRT? <laughs> I'm not hating because I'm going on that motherfucker yeah, in about yeah. six months. Oh, yeah, is that right? For sure. Is that, is that sure. your time? You'll right? know because I'll be like, my head will be like day in ahead. You'll come back from America looking yeah. different. <laughs> it's prescribed, bro. It's prescribed. Like, what are you on about? 
I'll be sitting across and be like, what the fuck? We're going we're gonna to have to move his mic. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely won't fit underneath here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was just a fucking, yeah. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know, Pat Sabatini did what yeah. he had to do, didn't he? There was a lovely push-pull to reap up, yeah. against, up against the fact. It was like, I was like, oh shit, that's uh-huh. fucking nice. I, I did love round. the uh, the performance from uh, one of the judges as well. Really, really pretending to be interested in what was mm-hmm. going on, and I'm like, I'm like, I know full well that they that put that. You individual have no idea what's happening right never now. Never <laughs> ever stepped on a mat. <laughs> Would walk on a mat with their shoes on. Wouldn't even think twice about it. Surely they just end up being fighters. You would hope so. Surely. It's a bit but of, why wouldn't you? I don't know. It's a bit of a fucking inside club, isn't it? These commissions. Yeah. There's a lot of people. You know. Eventually, surely they just end up as fighters. Yeah, maybe. Makes sense. <laughs> but Next if, one but was, that's if fighters want to get into it. Well, yeah, you have to pay them. <clears throat> they like yeah. that. They yeah. like the pay. <laughs> pay them well. Yanez and Grant. Mate, wicked. what a fight. Wicked. What a fight. And yeah. I did feel for Grant. And, he, and I, knew, I knew he was disappointed with the uh, with the result. Like, he almost landed as much. Like, it was 98. Like, and this, this is an interesting one. Because, like, you compare this one to the last fight that I was just looking at. So, just just for reference. So... Uh, Sabatini against Lutz. Sabatini landed 16 significant strikes and 111 total strikes. And Lutz landed 17 significant strikes and 36 mm. uh, tough, total strikes. Soft trying to land now, something significant over your shoulder, isn't it? Well, then we, then we go on to Yanez against David Grant, and the stats are exactly the same for significant and total. 98 yeah. significant, 98 total, 100. I feel like that's just a clerical error. <laughs> right? Like someone's just There's not too fucking, many punches I'm being not thrown counting for that twice, be, yeah. for fuck's sake. Oh, close They enough. all look pretty significant. Yeah. yeah, I mean, David Grant was literally two strikes behind and he threw, what, 18 more. Hmm. See, I didn't know that when I made that point before, but that just reinforces the yeah. point of like, all right, it might have looked significant, but I don't think it was significant. No. No, that's because because Yanez was rolling and moving. Almost and everything, like he, yeah, it was a good he, fight. It was when a you play that game, fight. I'm not saying you do it get wasn't. hit. Like you do, <clears> obviously. <throat> one yeah. of the most admirable things, from my point of view in the sport, is being able to counter strike and just moving just that one inch out of the way, like knowing exactly what the pitch is going to be when you move back into space and you land your shot. It's, yeah, it's a, it's one of the most beautiful parts of the sport. Yeah, and Yanez was on, man. He was on. Very rarely did Davy and. David catch him like clean, clean, like weight of the punch. Yeah, hitting like cuffing the, shots. Weren't yeah, they, like, a lot of time, it. kind of rolling off the off shoulder, and... off top of the head, whatever. But it was very rarely clean. And you know, what? I thought David was excellent. He just he just got rolled and laid off, and almost every shot, and it was just mm. tough in it. And there's a lot of energy expenditure when you you know you feel like you're landing shots and you're not actually landing those shots. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. he got bloodied up as well, which yeah, he's, no, he's of got course, you know, up, it? It, it doesn't. Uh, it I think always... Yanez won though, right? I don't feel like yeah, it no, was I, th- a I think he did. I mean, it was, but it was a lot closer than I think. Yeah, I think. I mean, because one judge scored it thirty twenty seven for Davy Grant. They they thought he won every round, but it but it was competitive. I mean, yeah. I could like there were there was was a round sometimes too. If I'd I'd say it on a different day where I could score yeah. it for Davy Grant, like I understand why he was frustrated at the end. Because he was like, oh, come on. Like, you know, he thought yeah. he'd won it. Like, if, he had, if he'd not got cut, it might have gone the other way, for example. Yeah, it true. was a split decision. It was it was a close fight. But he, his work rate was high. Um, and what is that? The chopper. It's my chopper. Sorry, I've got to go in a minute. That sounds like That's a chinook. That's my outside. Yeah. Jesus. They're coming. <laughs> what the fuck? You're right. We've got enough weapons in the house to defend for at least half an hour. <laughs> you should have Locked seen the guy's down. face. He was delivering the new Rev Gear punch bag the other day and he was cutting it off the pallet. Oh, yeah, he was like, have you got a knife? And I'm like, yeah. Do I have a knife? <laughs> <laughs> First one to hand. Yeah. That means freak you out. Um, yeah, t- tough, on, tough on Davey. Yeah, it was. Yanez, I thought, did himself a lot of favours. I thought he was... It was Davey's Tricky, right? He slept. Yeah, he's, he slept two people in three fights, has not he? He's good. He's a slick striker. Um, yeah, he's good. he's yeah slick striker. Fair news. Enjoy, enjoyed enjoyed watching well. it. It was it was close and and um, some of the stuff Yanez was pulling off, I was like, oh shit, yeah, I am never going to be able to do that. But I really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean that's a hell of a division as well to be in. Look at that bottom of the top fifteen. 
Cody Stamen, Song Yadong, Ooh. Frankie Edgar, Hafela Sun Sao, Marlon Vera. That'd be a good fight, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah, that'd be a good fight. Marlon Vera, uh, Adrian Yanis. That's a right division. It is. <laughs> That's a right division. <laughs> okay, next one up. Uh, Rani Yaya yeah. against Kyung Ho oh, Kang. Mate. Uh, fucking, we've talked about this so many times. Um, like your tactical awareness in a fight. The only way Yaya can win this fight is if you let him take you down. So I'm not saying don't throw any leg kicks, but if you throw a leg kick, you are opening the door mm. and he's going to try really hard he's- to go through that door because yeah. it's the only thing he's got. <laughs> clearly, clearly outmatched on the feet, wasn't he? Clearly. Yeah. Like it, sort of flirted everybody. with, tried a little Incredibly bit and was like, oh, fuck that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. Incredibly awkward. Yeah. Like a fish on the side of a, on the, on the side of a, yeah. Out yeah. of water, basically. And uh, I was just like, Kang was, you know, he's a good, he's a good fighter. He just opened doors that he didn't need to open. He was piecing him up on the with his hands. He didn't need to throw any leg kicks. He throw any kicks at all, really, yeah. did he? Could have beaten him with boxing. Quite keep, kept the distance, beat him with boxing. Mm-hmm. But he, uh, he didn't. Yeah, and that's what happens. And you know, sometimes it, it's just it's getting ahead of those takedowns defended before you kind of get started with your own game. Hmm. Like I've said that to a couple of the fighters recently, the ones that have got fights coming up. Like, let give them like that first two minutes. Yeah. Like in a five minute round, especially as a pro, it's different as an amateur maybe, but as a pro, first two minutes, like defend three takedowns, pressure them without doing much, and defend three takedowns. Yeah. And you break them mentally re- most of the time. They're like, oh fuck, now what? Now it's I have an to. Awful strike. feeling when yeah. you like feel like you've timed a takedown and you don't get it, and you expend all of that energy, and then you're like, oh shit, that was my safety blanket. Right. Now what? And a lot of people are, um, a lot of people are more comfortable striking than Rani Yaya is. Mm. If you stuff his first couple of takedowns, then all of a sudden he starts to panic a little what bit. What has he got? Because like, his wrestling is not great. No, no, it's not great. His jiu jitsu so is amazing. Confident. Yeah, he's so confident with it, he can kind of throw himself yeah, at it. You know, throw threw himself into like bottom half guard yeah. just just to get some contact with with uh, with Kang, and ends up with over ten minutes of control throughout the fight. Yeah, like, like I mean. Ronnie's striking is not great. His wrestling is not great, but his groundwork is unbelievable. So what you have to do is sort these two bits out and you can, you know. I think he's past that point though, isn't he? Yeah, maybe. I think he's past that. I no, think, no, I, I think mean, this all, is sorry, all, yeah, 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 all that sure. Kang needed to do was just oh, yeah, yeah, sort yeah, yeah. those two parts out. Don't go down there. And Stay you, away and from that. Sweet. Once you're in his world, you're in trouble, aren't you? Yeah. You're in a lot of trouble. But look, I thought, other than that, I thought um, Kyung Ho Kang... After two years out, I thought he looked quite good. He got quite sharp on his feet, he's wasn't good he? Shape, he's like, isn't yeah, it? great shape. Got big dude, mm. straight puncher. Seventeen and nine though. Yeah, and that didn't help at all, did no, it? No, it didn't. No. Anyway, yeah, mate, Talita Santos, Talia it. Santos. She's yeah, is fucking, it Talia? It's Talia. Because I feel like there's an eye missing if it's Talia. Ta- Tyler. It's Taylor. Tyler. Tyler, Tyler, Taylor, Santos. Taylor, Tyler Santos. You know, there's a lot of different versions of her first name <laughs> floating around. DC's got She's DC said it three ways. We picked it, didn't we? Yeah. She's good, man. Well rounded, powerful. Even more confident. impressive that it was a stand up. Yeah. Like I think we we agreed that our, our wrestling jiu jitsu was probably a, a bit of a level above. But um dropped a clean twice yeah. as well. Like not messing around. No. I hope Jojo is not superstitious or cold or might be making her way back to her surname. <laughs> she, she wasn't doing too well on, on the ground with that, that name either. No, though, no, so, true. You know. <clears throat> true. I, I, I like the fact that that, uh, that Santos decided to engage with her in striking, though. Yeah, she I didn't felt like it was to. on purpose. Yeah. I felt like it was yeah, to make a point, make right? A point. I was like, all right, let's see. Yeah. Um, very slick. Yeah, a load of... It's very bouncy and very elastic. It's like this division, though, isn't it? You know what I mean? She's... I mean, what is she, flyweight? Yeah. Like she's got wins over McCann, Robertson, uh, Modafferi, and now uh, Joanne Wood. That's, that's building. That's building. I, I'd like um, Angela Lee next. Yeah, I reckon that would be a fun fight. That would be a fun fight. Where is she? Yeah, she's it's not no, too far up, right? Where is she? You know what? I mean, she's she's got a long way to jump. She's at ten currently, and the rankings haven't been updated because it's Monday, and uh, and Joanne Wood is at number five. Like she could potentially jump a few places in the rankings. Yeah, that should be just maybe she might. Yeah, you look at the should be right. Above her should as be well. right round Andrea Andrea Lee. Yeah, like Calvio's just come off a loss. She's just dropped. 
Uh, she's just dropped four places. Jessica Eyes holding steady at eight. Andrea Lee's up five. I suppose she just won. No, they're both they're both just won. Andrea Lee was last week, right? Yeah. 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 That might yeah. There you go. Sean, I've done your job for you. Yeah, Santos. I don't know. I mean but like I I'd even bump her up and throw in there with Chikagian, you know. Already. Chikagian's got good footwork, but she's not like a heavy striker, but she is a great grappler. She's what a black belt, Enzo mm-hmm. Gracie. Uh, that might be an interesting matchup. That will really see where uh, Santos' yeah, striking technique is. Yeah. Like, why it's not? I mean, done I mean, a lot of favours beating Jojo, Yeah, for isn't sure it? it does. A lot of favours. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for her because I, I think, she, like, we need a few contenders in this division. Like, if you look up at the top, you've got Andrade, Chikagian, Murphy, Maya, mm. and then uh, um, and Jojo, who's obviously just lost. Like you need a new contender in this division for Shevchenko. Mm. Like if you get if you get Santos one other good win in the top five, you now you've got another contender. Yeah, and I w- I would go with either Laura Murphy or Chikagian. Mm. It's t- tough when you got someone so dominant at the top of that division, mm. isn't it? It's like you can't throw her in there too soon. She, uh, she is needs... it too soon though? I mean, she is nineteen and one. Yeah. <laughs> She no, but I mean, she's just she's like she's just broken. Well, this potentially she might break in the top five. She's just breaking in the top five, and then I suppose you get her one more. That's yeah. Nah, get her up there. Get, get her, her in. in there. Yeah, why not? Why not? I get think she's, I think she can do it. I mean, stopping JoJo in the first round, and it wasn't like she took her down and subbed her. It was no, like she no, it was no, the no, whole no. game. You know. Yeah. Yeah, good. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that fight. That yeah. Good performance, man. Really good. Good performance. Mate, Sean Brady. Like I said, I just don't get it. I just do not understand how they are welterweights. Massive, isn't he? Massive. Thick, strong, powerful, well-rounded. Tough, in it? Like, I didn't... Mike Chiesa was... He didn't necessarily do anything wrong. Brady's just a bit better than him. Just a bit better than him. If he, like, sat into his striking a little bit, I th- I, Chiesa was piecing him up. Yeah, but it's catching him a lot. It, but it's but it, it's catching him because it's it's kind of it's kind of awkward. It's not tidy. No, it's not. It's, or, it's, it's like, like awkward and weird. It, yeah. and, it's, and because and because of that, you you know that the mechanics behind it aren't necessarily great. Which it means doesn't that it's like he hits hard. No, that's it. But he, he probably could if he's got if he had good mechanics. Yeah, because he's got he's he's a th- he's a thick, heavily muscled individual. Yeah. Especially now he's moved up to welterweight. Mm. I remember, th- I remember seeing him during Fight Island. I was like, "Fucking hell, he's he's a lot bigger Big than I thought unit. he was going to be." If you taught him how to have a real good, strong, prodding jab, you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to knock people out comfortably. It's a very awkward style, isn't it? Yeah, very awkward style. That I don't, I don't think is not awkward. You know, some people are awkward in a good way, and they catch other people because they don't recognise the tempo and the timing of it. But mm. it looks inefficiently awkward. But he was yeah. still landing, like he was still touching him. Quite quite regular intervals he was touching him, but then fucking hell, the human vice clamp got on him and you ain't getting him off, are you? Mm-mm. You are not getting him mm. off. No. His back's that thick. Yeah. And that's all pulling that's power. A, that's, that's, all, a, that's, that's a that's a row pull, position. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. He's uh Yeah. I don't know, it's like I was quite I, I watched it live and then or maybe the morning after, and then I watched it again, I think this morning or last night. I think he's going to get picked apart standing Do you, yeah. by a couple of people. Thompson, Edwards, Luke, they're going to, I reckon if... So where he is, right? He has another big win, just like yeah. uh, just uh, just like before. If Kies is touching him at the regularity that he was touching him and you put Luke in there, he's going to touch him with a lot more damage. <sighs> There's some fucking killers between him and where Kies is ranked. Yeah. So Brady's 14 and Kies is 6. So he stands to jump a good few places in the next couple of days. It's going to put him in that Thompson Edwards Luke bracket, or not too far off. Yeah, but then you, like you look, so that that means above him at the moment, between him and where Kiesa is, you've got Ponza Nibio, Leach, mm. Jeff Neal, Chimaev, Bilal Mohamed, well, the chat, Neil Magnet, and Masvidal. Yeah, the chat's Hamza in it. Yeah, that was floating around social media. Is that right? I won't mind seeing him in there against Bilal Mohamed or Neil Magnet. Like, there's a couple of good fights. Yeah. The leech he is coming out, off a he lot. Can win, he can out grapple them. Yeah, I think so. The Hamzat one's interesting because he's it's fucking hell. Like Ooh. that's just a nightmare for everybody. And did you see what he did to Hamanza? Yeah, I know. Like you know what was funny is they were they were wrestling before they'd even cleared the cameras out of the cage. Did you see that? <laughs> they just go. It was like Jamaya just started the round. Like yeah. he, he started straight out scoring a point. Um Hamanson did. Full one, yeah. Watch it. It's good. Yeah, Hamanson looked looked all right. You so know. what rules? 
Just freestyle no, wrestling. Just freestyle wrestling. Yeah. But they did kind of use the cage a bit and the right. commentators didn't really know exactly when they were going and what, what the limitation on points was. I think Chumayev ended up winning uh, eight points to nothing over two five-minute rounds. <sighs> Sounds exhausting. But, mate, he was, it, was, it was good. Yeah. Hermanson held his own did at third points. Yeah, he got better as the match went on. That's cool. But Chumayev is comparable in size to Hermanson mm. and he... His fucking wrestling technique is good. I was talking Crazy. to Rasto about it earlier yeah. today, and I, I said because obviously Rasto's a strong wrestler. I said, so I said, so how's his technique? He's like, oh, yeah, he's pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah, but then, but one thing, one thing Rasto did say, which I thought was an interesting observation, like before that, before that wrestling exchange with Hermanson, like we didn't really know where his limitations were. But towards the end of that match, you start to kind of see Hermanson have a couple of little victories here and right. there. And then if you Careful, think to yourself, don't show your cards. Exactly. Don't show your exactly. cards just for a fuck around wrestle. Right? Yeah. Like that's what that's what Rasto said. He was like, he might have given away a little bit there. Yeah. Even if it's just a confidence booster. I mean, <clears throat> something else I read online which I thought was interesting is that he would have it would be easier for him to be Izzy than it would be to be Usman. Mm-hmm. Like you could put Chimaev in there against the the middleweight champion in the world right now. Yeah, and I would I, I would say he's got a fairly gonna, good chance yeah. of beating him, especially compared to how his chances would be against Usman right now. Mm. I just I I, I, I think, think Usman's like, yeah. parts of the game just sync up slightly different, don't they? That's it. Yeah, like like I mean, the thing is, I can just I can picture him just absolutely mauling Usman. I think I think Do it would be. I, yeah. I don't know. I I mean, I don't know. Oh, I don't know about mauling. Yeah, but like. <laughs> maybe slightly getting not? the better in the wrestle, but yeah. not ragging him around like um, like like Khabib did to like, Justin Gaethje. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. but that happened. I didn't think that was going to happen to Justin Gaethje. Like people know, I mm. thought Justin Gaethje was going to be Khabib's toughest test. Yeah, they, he, they remind you about that quite a lot, don't they? Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind being wrong. I I, I, I like no, I like good luck to learn. being right the whole time. But that, that's what then puts this in question because then because like there's something special about Jamaya. There's no doubt. Mm. Like and, and nobody in that division wants the matchmakers to call them and say, "Hey, you're fighting Chimaev next." Like every time there's a stir Airplane online, mode. it's like, oh, "Fuck!" Yeah. Like, there's that that video of him chatting to Darren Till live on Instagram. It was there were twenty nine thousand people watching that. Yeah, are live on his Instagram. Like you can match him up against anybody. My God, and there's a massive I reckon stir. Nobody out of that twenty nine thousand people knew what either party was saying during that time. They were just like, "Oh, so. right." Can anyone sign <laughs> Can language imagine? this? Because yeah. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Closed captions, just yeah. the, just the <laughs> just going, not what? sure emoji. No yeah. idea. What like, are they speaking? Not one of those people above Chimaev is saying, yeah, I'll fight him. And being vocal about it. Well, even even after the fight, DC prodded uh, Sean Brady like three times for who you want to fight. And he was just like, whoever. Yeah. Whoever. Whoever. I don't know whether that was like, you know, fucking whoever or yeah. whoever, not Hamza. <laughs> <Whoever>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with the asterisk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. I don't know. I really like Sean Brady because he's got really cool tattoos. He has got really cool tattoos. But I think he's going to get. I don't know, man. You know, I, I just see... feel like if 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 Mike was touching him, what is Vicente, Vicente Luque going to do to him? Yeah, yeah, potentially. potentially. Until he gets his hands or on Wonder him. Boy, until he gets his hands on. Or Wonder Boy. Until, obviously, as soon as he gets his hands on him, everyone's going to be a bit chalk because he does look like a human vice grip. <laughs> He does. Did you see the the tattoo comparison? Yeah. Um, yeah the tiger yeah. on on the uh, yeah. and the yeah. What was he? Guillotine and a tiger. Guillotine a tiger. Wicked. Funny. I think he's a great addition to the welterweight division. Yeah, he definitely. Really um, good. He's definitely not an easy match for anyone, is he? No, he's I just, not. I just wonder where his striking leaves him in the whole scheme of things. Yeah. Imagine what it's like being Usman looking down at the division. You can see the likes um, of Sean Brady and yeah. Chimaev on the way up. Like, oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah can we get it boys I'll decide when yeah uh, it was good to see Misha back in there I, do you feel like her stand up style has changed a little bit but, and she's not quite sure about it she just looked a little bit unsure of I don't, of I don't like, ever really think she's been going on at yeah. one stage I was like I don't know what's going on here I don't ever she's think not she's natu- been natural striker no is she? she's not She's not. You know, when you like a million times we've said you can see like a grappler striking, you can see a I suppose a striker grappling is not quite as obvious to see, but other than that they're not doing very well. It it, it might be to a grappler. Yeah, maybe, you're talking yeah, from yeah. a striker's yeah. perspective. <laughs> no, well that's rich. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, but I, she, yeah, yeah. I, I just I don't think she's ever looked particularly comfortable on the feet, and I think MMA is moving on. Mm. Like people were really impressed with her fight against against um, uh, Marion Renault. Yeah, but, but Marion Renault is of the same generation. Yeah, to it was me, the perfect say. fight. For, we said that in the preview, didn't we? It was yeah. the perfect perfect matchup for her to. Yeah, yeah. There was I someone commenting on all the 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 war room and the posts and shit, and they were like, "Caitlin Vera is no good. Caitlin Vera is no good. Misha Tate's gonna win." I'm like, "Yeah." I kind of couldn't not say it in the war room. I'm like, "It's a it's a hard fight for Misha." Yeah, like Caitlin Kate Vera is just she just massive. she's fucking huge, isn't she? Massive. And she puts everything together so well. Like Misha's kind of awkward on the feet, and then she she gets a bit more comfortable in in yeah. the clinch range, but then she kind of looks a bit panicked until she's on the ground in control. Yeah, Ketlin did that like accumulation mm. damage because mm. I didn't necessarily notice like big shots being landed. But every now and again, you get a, like a pan of of Misha's face and a fucking eye was swollen shut and nose is all busted up. Yeah, and I was like, oh, she's getting hit. She's getting hit a lot. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. Ketlin's here to stay, isn't she? I just wonder where she where she goes next. It's probably a little bit early for a Kai rematch, isn't it? I think a little bit. But but I also think that she would have... I don't think that fight would go the same second time no, around. No, I think she's different now. I think she was... I, I mean, she was close to beating Kunitskaya. Mm. I, I think if it wasn't for those, that last... What was it? Minute where, mm. where Kunitskaya managed to get on top and land those elbows. I think that was the thing that swayed it for... for, mm. um, for well, I mean, it was a split decision, wasn't it? She won't get that. I don't think they'll make... They, they won't make that again. No, I don't think so. Really. I don't know where Aspen Lad's at. I'm not sure what she's... What she's doing. What's Irene Aldana doing? That'd oh, be yeah. a good fight. Yeah, she's lost to her already, hasn't she? Oh, yeah, of course she yeah, got she's knocked lost out. Her, yeah. That would be a good one then. And Because Pen- Penny's matched. Passed. The only really other one is Holly Holm. Is Holly Holm matched? Uh, I don't well, maybe she's due a, she must be due a fight. I think she had a couple cancelled. But that's tough. Yeah. I don't, do you think that's too much too soon? Who? Stick- for, for Holly Holm? No, for Ketlin. To fight Holly Holm. Yeah, I think so. A little bit. I One think, more. I think Holly Holm keeps her on. I think she does what she did to Aldana and mm. keeps her on the end of her foot. Maybe make the Aldana rematch to see what happens. Yeah. Aldana's not fought since she lost Holly Holm, has she? Sell up. Oh, she has, yeah. She stopped uh, Kunitsky in the first round. God, it's tight, yeah, that might be a good that one. Division, isn't it? That might be a good one. Instead of getting uh, instead of getting revenge over Kunitskaya, beat someone that beat her. <laughs> yeah, and then not bother with that rematch because it was a split decision anyway. Yeah, yeah. I feel like she could have won that fight, and I feel like she she would feel confident going into a rematch with Kunitskaya. Mm. She just she just I don't know. She just she's took her eyes off the prize. She, yeah, she's she's going to be difficult for a lot of people, isn't she? Yeah, she's yeah, but she doesn't have any, no real like pop. She doesn't look like. She's not very elastic, you know, like we talk about all the time, don't we, about people having bounce and being elastic. She doesn't seem to have that. She's relatively f- flat-footed, but she just looks strong. And Do you think she'd difficult. be underpowered against Nunes then? Maybe, but she's, she'd be bigger than Nunes though, right? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Let me have a quick... So she's 30, she's 5'8", 68-inch reach. No, I think she's about the same. What is same. Nunes Fuck must be five seven. Jeez. Must be five seven five eight. Mm. Not not a contender just yet. You don't no, think? I don't. I don't reckon you. No. Too early. I don't know. Attempting to push her through in it and I rush her. Up. Yeah, it is a bit, but no, she's not not ready just yet. I'd like her to pick up a couple more wins. I think she's in that handful stage. She's like yeah. a handful for people right now. That was now. a unanimous decision to uh, Connie Sky. How was it? Yeah, I think there's a couple more fights for her yet. She's still high in the rankings, though, isn't she? I was yeah. just looking. She's she number to... seven. No, fuck, she's gonna hear. Yeah. Like she, she might have to open the door to someone lower down, like a Macy Chasson or. Yeah. 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 Right. So you're heading off, are you? I've got to go. I've got to go on a little mission a little to mission. New York. Yeah, we've got a little. Uh, we've got a little mission in New York for three weeks. So we sorted out what we're doing next week. Yeah. Uh, are you gonna do one next week? You wanna do next week? Yeah. There we go. Jamie, Jamie <sighs> next week. Tell you what, mate, this is some big shoes to fill over here. <laughs> Seriously, some huge shoes to fill. Nine and a half. Um, <laughs> and a half. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, yeah. We're gonna. We're, we've got a little, um, little break. Jamie and a couple of other people are gonna fill in, they. Yeah. And then we'll see what happens. Okay, so you want to do next week then? So that's Fun Aldo. 
and then, then the week after is Jimmy Warlet. Yes. He's going to do oh Charles God, Oliveira I'll Poirier. I'll for that one. I'll write his notes for him, don't worry. <laughs> and then uh, um, I'll see if V wants to do yeah, the like Lewis Daukus one. And then I'm back 22nd of this. 21st of December. Yeah. I don't. I looked on the schedule. They're not doing like a New Year card or anything no, like that. No, there's no New Year. Do they not normally cards. do a big New yeah, Year card? Yeah, normally they do. Normally they do like a December sort of 28th, yeah. 29th, 30th in Vegas. Yeah. But I didn't see anything. They wouldn't drop something in now, would they? No, I don't think Too so. Too late. I think so. Too late. All right. So there might not be one there. Oh, and we've got uh, uh, Jake Paul against um, Tommy Fury on the 18th of December as well. <sighs> it's be that almost like. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I sort of want him to win just to see what happens to, 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 to Tommy. I think he's, he's got gonna a get, good shot. He's going to get beaten by a bike chain by his dad. <laughs> his brother's told him not to come home. He's going to have to move country. <laughs> change his name. He's changed his name. I think I think he's got a good chance of beating Tommy Fury. Do you? Yeah. Like Jake I, Paul's to be honest, got I've confidence. Not really watched and Tommy got... Fury box. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen him box. <clears throat> he's, he's he's good, but he's basic. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like he's not. He's not certain with everything he's throwing. He's yeah. not throwing it to fucking so really much hurt people. Pressure on him. Yeah, like Tyson, you can see Tyson's calculated and he's thinking yeah. and he's and he's working his opponent over psychologically. Oh I God. don't see the same thing with Tommy. So he looks pressure. the part. He looks fucking great. But are they comparable in that size? Because I know that um, the yeah, Paul yeah. brothers like almost to fight. Exactly, like almost exactly. Almost exactly. Actually, much smaller than him. Yeah, they're they're comfortably the same yeah. size, about the same height and weight. God, I, ju- that- I don't know. I just feel like Jake Paul's. Like he's working hard. Like yeah. He's got a lot on the line here, and and it's not like he's not a, a big talented kid. What is he? Twenty four. Yeah. You know he's got still, all the money the, in the world. The pressure is just not the same. The the pressure on someone who's saying that they're a professional boxer and they're from a fighting fighting man's family. That's pressure. That is pressure. You ain't coming to Christmas dinner if you lose this fight, mate. Imagine. No way. Imagine. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. All right, check out onbanmarino.com. Heaps of um, discounts going on over Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And don't forget, ex- shit, hold on, let me just get this right. Extra Outlaw, right? Outlaw Extra. Outlaw, outlaw, outlaw Extra. Oh, gee. Outlaw Extra. Fucking one job. For an extra 5% one on job. top of all the other discounts. Outlaw Extra. That is literally my only job. There we go. Nice one, bro. Catch you next time. <laughs>